sweet honey cakes. If you don't pay attention to this important mark of wisdom, you might find yourself venturing into the dark side. We might call it being a seller. This is a total crypto market cap. It looks the same pattern for total crypto one, two, or three, which includes or excludes Bitcoin, Ethereum. Now, we want to buy in the depression. Are you depressed? We've been through two years of depression. Look at this. You were rewarded for taking the other side of the scam sellers in the previous bear market. And then the bear market before that, and then the bear market before that. Do you understand? Buying in the depression is not a guarantee, but it gives you the highest odds of success. Once again, not a guarantee. It just puts us in the right position of friendship and kindness. So that's why I'm here to repeat to you and to let you know, friends tell you to buy in the depression. Even though it's not what you want to hear, it's what you need to hear. You've got to accumulate during the depression. You've got to accumulate when no one can see the vision. No one wants to look at it. No one wants to look at their phone. No one wants to even... Non-friends will tell you to buy in euphoria. Come, friend, we're all making money. It's just getting started. Everybody is exiting then, unfortunately. Do not be a non-friend. You want to see a cool chart? This is a chart only a friend can show you. So we are handy heading into 2024, which is a Bitcoin halvening year. I was always curious. What happens during a Bitcoin halvening year? Well, I noticed every Bitcoin halvening year, January and February are green. Don't know why. I guess it's the Bitcoin harmony. People just feel a bit more euphoric. They're planning ahead. But also, that's the USD charts. What about the BTC and ETH ratios? That's actually the most important part of all. So what I've done is I manually constructed this chart called Quick Garbage. By the way, everything's labeled Quick Garbage. Now, what I did was I did total three over the total market cap of crypto. So... Total three is altcoins, what I just showed you. So it's altcoins divided by, and then everything else. I want you, I want to see Bitcoin, Ethereum, etc. And so you will get what alts are doing versus Bitcoin and Ethereum, the blue chips. Now, the chart patterns, they're basically the same. So you don't get a different direction chart pattern. It's just how deep the retracements are when you play around the ratios, they're the only things that matter. As you can see, this trend seems to be going up. Up. I mean, like, by the way, it can go to zero. But what does this mean? It basically means our thesis is right. The thesis is this. Bitcoin and Ethereum, three thumbs up. Thank you very much. However, Bitcoin and Ethereum, they will be sliced up. Their competitive edge slowly will be chipped away by other people. Now, when you tell people in Bitcoin Maxi Camp and Ethereum Maxi Camp, they lose the plot. They bubble up with rage. They go, brr, brr, no, it can't happen, no. But of course, they don't want to admit that because they bought their bags early. Now, by the way, I bought Ethereum at 180 bucks, but they bought the bags at like $8. They're like, we're not going to get toppled. Yes, you are. You see, friends, if you go back and you look at all the market cycles of the stock market. That's right, the stock market, over 100 years of them. Retailers, normies, humans, we always make the same mistake. We completely underestimate the power of competition. We are unable to predict supply in the future. Now, when I say supply, I don't mean the supply of the coin. You see, we can predict the supply of Bitcoin. We can, com- we can predict the supply of Ethereum. But what they can't predict is the thought and the supply of Bitcoin and Ethereum competitors. You see, this is where the game turns on its head. That's why I think there's a good chance that this is going to keep going up over time. Ethereum, what what are they actually sell, friends? I'll just let you know. Bitcoin and Ethereum are selling decentralized block space. Right. Now, they are on the very far left of the decentralization spectrum. So, yeah, you have like Bitcoin here, you have Ethereum here, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, so you, you can have fun over here. You have your Bitcoin, Ethereum. 
And they're, they're thinking, oh, wow, we're so decentralized. You know, big, big, fat, deep, big, fat, deep. And over here is centralized. But I want you to know something. What's stopping these coins from moving just a little bit to the left, just closer and closer? And the market here going like, you know what? I like the decentralization part, but I don't need it to be like really, really, really decentralized. I just need it to be like just decentralized enough. And what happens is as they move in, they get a better experience. They get higher speed and they get higher value. That's right, because they don't have as many expenses. Now, what I'm doing is what I'm just showing you is a scale. I talked about this. Decentralization is a scale. Speed is a scale. Everything's a scale, friends. There's, there's a risk curve. Everything is relative to each other. You can always put something all out on a curve of friendship, okay? So you have, the, you have the friends down here. You might have non-friends up here, right? It's the same thing. Now, I think altcoins versus Ethereum will continue to trend up. You already know that the game is changing. We're implementing more features, more applications. They're doing, you know, the gaming, the NFT, the metaverse. You got the friend tech. You're going to have the other weird stuff coming out later. A lot of things are being implemented. Do you really need to sit on Ethereum? No, you don't. I mean, Bitcoin people still think everyone's going to have to sit on Bitcoin. So we're starting to see this multi-chain world. Multiple features are being implemented. But what I'm doing here is I'm just setting the path forward. You see, for us, for us, you sit there and you're like, well, that's obvious. Yeah, but... But is it obvious when they have 99% of their bags in Bitcoin and Ethereum? No, it's not obvious to them. It's because they want to hold on to it. And we can see the future. You see, to me, this is going up. But if you're a Bitcoiner, you think you're getting 300K in this cycle. If you're an Ethereum user or a meth user, you think you're getting like over 10K in this cycle. You think you're getting maybe even 15K or 20K. They refuse to entertain the thought that maybe the money's going to go to altcoins, like completely. No one's giving any chance of that. Everybody thinks, okay, definitely Bitcoin, Ethereum. I don't think so, man. I don't think so. Why? Well, go around and ask. Who on earth wants to cop the unit bias there? The euphoria is not extreme in them anymore. We know the truth. So that's what I think is going to happen over time. I think altcoins, slowly, and then obviously fast, they're going to gain on Bitcoin, and Ethereum. They're going to give you more yield, more speed, more transparency. They're basically just going to get, you know, the decentralization part. They're just going to chip away at it slowly enough. And they're going to, they're going to, we're going to find out in the altcoin world, how much decentralization do we really need? Because look, we're so thankful to Bitcoin because Bitcoin's super decentralized and so is Ethereum. But we're like, hmm, can we just get a little bit further in? And I think that's what we're going to start to see as time goes on. So, you know, the chart I constructed for you because you're my baby doll, baby cake, butterscotch biscuit, it shows you that altcoins, despite being insanely risky, can give an insanely good reward in the future. However, you should measure alts on their BTC and their ETH pair. Don't be confused. USD charting, I just do it because everyone's familiar, but you shouldn't look at them. For example, the link ETH chart, you know, on a link chart, it looks like a poopy, right? I put on a log chart. I mean, log chart hides a lot of the pain. <laughs> but this is what we really want to look at. I want to know how Chainlink is going versus Ethereum. Same thing with Hex, Pulse, PulseX, Doge. I want to know. Why, why Ethereum? I mean, you can choose Bitcoin. It's just that I think, you know, I think Ethereum goes higher than Bitcoin and it just gains on Bitcoin in the next cycle. So Ethereum is going to be more scarce. Is going to be like that forever? We don't know. But for the foreseeable future, they seem pretty neck and neck. And I seem like more people can degen into, um, into Ethereum. So that's the goal. Now, obviously, the goal is also not to be on the consensus trade. Everybody is hugging Bitcoin and Ethereum, friends. I've been telling this. I, I could see this in 2022. Over a year and a half ago, I was tweeting about it so much, man, so much. I'm saying, guys, everyone is stacked Bitcoin and Ethereum, and it's still happening. That's why I think we are really gearing up for this type of move where altcoins start to outperform Bitcoin and Ethereum and no one no one can see it coming. No one knows what's going on. Don't forget, Bitcoin and Ethereum, blue chips, mature, okay? Mature blue chips do not give you an insane parabolic run. There's no more emotional money. All the emotional money bought early, sold bottoms, and they're just going to move on to something else. But that's why I think we are ready for some moon gains, of course, coming in the future soon.
The final thing I want to touch on, friends. So there is an island in this world called Hawaii. All right. Now, Hawaii had a city or an island and there were some fires. Now, recently what happened is there was a lot of controversy because a lot of things happened, which I actually can't talk about because I'm going to end up in a body bag, which is kind of funny. So if you're reading this right now, there is a conspiracy, right? It is about Hawaii space lasers. And these space lasers, friends, I'm very shocked, soon will be censored on YouTube. So discussing this will be taken down, which is kind of crazy because I was like, you know what? As soon as I heard this, I was like, wait a minute. Uh, I think there's more going on here. So it is wild times we live in. Very unfortunate. I wonder how long will Twitter land last before it gets breached? Because look... I know, I know, friends, I know, I was in your position. I was like saying, well, oh, Elon will never let it happen. All right, man, all right. Elon gets funding from the government for SpaceX. You understand? Elon can get one visit for some dudes wearing a black suit and tell them, you know what? You know that dream you have? Yeah, well, you know, we can literally make it do a U-turn if you don't do exactly what we say. One phone call. One message, and we know this happens. It's happened over the past like 80 years. There's been many, many, many reports, different companies, different people, different technology, innovation. They that this, this does happen. So I do wonder how long it'll be before that happens. So I unfortunately won't be able to cover too many of these topics. Like, oh, they're crazy, man. Like YouTube, really? You know, it's wild. They don't even care anymore. They, they know that by doing this, they just highlight it to us and it gives it more validity, but makes you think if this was all a joke, why would you ban it? So clearly something's going on here. And I'm going to finish off with this comment from JPEG Gans Gangster. <laughs> oh, what a username, by the way. Mr. JPEG Gangster. He said this article. He said, dude, it's in Forbes. What do we do when a coin is in Forbes? Yeah, we don't buy it. 100% true. The top signal is here. Baby doll, baby cakes. Make sure you like, subscribe, press the belly button and all. Tell mom and dad we love and appreciate them. And of course, Hawaii is an island. And that's all we're going to say about that. Catch you in the next one.